May I request Mr. Rajender and all the eminent panelists to help unveil the book? So there are, mo there are moments when you feel a sense of deja vu. I cannot forget about five years back, or I think four years back, me and Rajendra were talking about how he should write a book. And today, when we met, I think it's a dream come true for all of us. And the book that he's so uh, willingly and with a lot of hard work, he's created. So now I would request Rajendra to share his experience, his journey towards the genesis of the book and the thought-provoking ideas that will impact us all. Firstly, I thank each one of you to be here on the winter evening. And more than that, I wish to thank everyone here on the dais. All of them, incidentally, had changed their schedules to be here. Dr. Devi Shetty was speaking at the Global Investor Summit in Karnataka. He had to reach you to be here. Thank you, Dr. Shetty. Uh, Dr. Murli Manoj Joshi, his estimates committee is traveling across the country and he, he took a break to be here today evening and he starts his travel again tomorrow morning. Thank you, Dr. Joshi. And Honorable Minister Shripad Nayakji, I think he has taken a six hour flight to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, Unfortunately, Mr. Nadda couldn't change. There was something very sensitive, and he was keen to be here, but he couldn't. But I'm, he has his message that he has recorded and sent us, which will play after some time. Two reasons I shouldn't be speaking here. First is you have living legends sitting here and talking. So I think I should better sit silently and listen. And the second thing is I've already written so much in my book, I don't see a reason why I should be speaking. But my publisher said, author has to say a few words. And so I said, that's fine, I'll, I'll speak for sure. And then yesterday, one of my colleagues in Elsevier said, I think, sir, you should make a presentation. I think well, he was not convinced that I could speak well, so he thought, at least when he makes a presentation, <laughs> he will do some preparation. But that's okay. I mean, I know you got to push people like me. So, you know, the first thing is, uh, when you see the cover of this book, it has two messages. I substituted the population of states with countries the similar population. And you see this. I mean, we have not 36 states, we have 36 countries. That symbolizes the complexity of a challenge of our honorable health ministers. When you try to address health and that to the state subject of 36 countries, it's an enormous challenge. As Ajit rightly said, it has taken me five years to just write a book on health reforms. Not to reform the healthcare of the country, you can imagine the task the ministers have. It's not going to be easy. And the third thing you will see is a picture of smiling children. I keep saying, I said this in the UN General Assembly, that for this generation, we have missed the bus. We are too late. I think as a responsible generation, we should look towards the future of the country, and that's the children's health. Child health should be our focus. And that's probably one of the key messages of this book. I have made sure that I have uh, messages uh, which are critical. So one of them is, I always keep hearing anywhere you go in the world, the health is a social sector. Health is a social mandate of the government. Well, I think health is a vital issue. If you want to secure the economy of any country, it needs to be considered a vital sector to secure the economy. So our very approach towards how we look as health is not to just look at it as a social mandate and a social sector. It's something that comes not as a priority. If you have unhealthy people working as a population, you will have unhealthy economy. Something we have been grappling for decades. Another thing you will see in the book is a lot of data that I have put. And the data says India is transforming. We are transitioning. The irony is that the place where we are transitioning is not so good. So we are transitioning from disease capital to that capital. And that's the shocking thing. I think we need to take it seriously. 
question is how many more decades and how many more deaths do we need to reform the system i think we don't have time there are advantages i was yesterday talking to the honorable minister he said rajan i am an optimist i think we have huge opportunities to change the healthcare of this country and we will do it trust me the little i know of mr nadda ji he is one of the best health ministers we have if we can't do it now we'll never do it so what are the advantages indian healthcare has this is very interesting we don't have business lobbies i mean if us wants to reform its healthcare system trust me they spend almost 18% of their gdp on health one out of 5 dollars go to health the industry would not let them reform if it touches the balance sheets in india we don't have those lobbies we are very lucky second we don't have baggage we don't have to go back and roll over things and undo things to reform our system so it's a whole lot easier because we are building our healthcare system and the most important we have learning from all over the world available to us now question is do we want to adopt cuba you want to adopt the models of sri lanka uk france us or probably pick up the best from them and still build an indigenous system that's another big advantage with us before i go to my last slide you know there's something that i always wondered you know in healthcare people need hope they need empathy they need to be assured that things things won't go wrong but see on what basis we measure health we measure health on all negative indicators infant mortality maternal mortality deaths so how can you have a positive outcome with negative indicators something that i have always been you know concerned about and other thing you know is if you look at the kind of wards we have this is very interesting you know we have critical ward imagine a patient and their family state of mind taking a patient to a critical ward i mean critical means a person who is actually extremely ill or is very near to death that's the name of a ward trauma ward deep depressing or disturbing experience now that's a trauma ward you're taking a patient and his family goes to a trauma ward and the last i always love to quote this is casualty ward casualty is already a person killed so you take a patient to a casualty ward and you know he loses the will to fight i mean we need a change in thinking i mean probably what could have been done better is if these wards were level 1 care level 2 care level 3 care you know rather than putting casualty wards so patient looks at the casualty ward say am i going to it i am a casualty already you know so these are you don't require investments to change so once we change our thinking we'll change our healthcare this is the last thing i had thank you so much